Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with is Dr. Brian Mann. So, Brian, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So, I'm currently an assistant professor in the Department of uh, Leadership, Policy, and Technology Studies at the University of Alabama, um, but I'm going to be transitioning uh, into the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy uh, at the University of Kansas. Um, my background is in education policy. I do a lot of research uh, on policy and uh, intended and unintended consequences of, of policy implementation. Um, and in particular, uh, kind of at the focus of this conversation, uh, my dissertation project focused on uh, online learning and cyber charter schools in the state of Pennsylvania and what that looked like um, over the past decade uh, or and even more at this point in Pennsylvania. So I think um, the knowledge I gained from my dissertation project will, should be really helpful for uh, folks that are navigating these these times we're in right now. Well, speaking of these times that we're in right now, um, we've got a lot of folks that have you know, are experiencing this really disruption in the school year so that closing this school year and opening the next school year will be unlike any other that they've had. What advice would you have for school leaders in terms of trying to, to navigate that and, and make some accommodations for the fact that this isn't the way in which we normally do things? Yeah, I think the best piece of advice that I can give um, centers on the theme of, of flexibility. Um, so we know, you know, we know that there's a lot we don't know in terms of what's happening here. Um, and fortunately, with um, some of the tools that exist for online learning, um, there are opportunities for flexibility. And so what I mean by that is um, just uh, preparing for, um, you know, the case that you may open up soon or you may not and having plans and contingency plans in place for multiple scenarios. Um, in addition to that, I think it's also really important. And one thing that I've learned through Pennsylvania is that collaboration um, with other districts or other units of governance, if they're available for you, um, are really helpful. Uh, Pennsylvania school districts, when, uh, for example, when they were trying to determine strategies for online learning, um, the ones that did it best were the ones that worked with intermediate units in Pennsylvania. They worked with other school districts in Pennsylvania. They worked with um, some outside vendors. And so they were um, flexible, not only in their willingness to try new things, but also flexible in who were their partners and how they were able to um, gather information and ideas. And so I think um, to uh, be flexible and to collaborate with others would be, I think is, it would, is really helpful um, in, in these challenges that we're, that we're facing. Okay. Um, now, obviously, when this hit this year, folks, for the most part, were scrambling and because we weren't, we didn't have that planning in place to be able to make the shift like we uh, have been able to in so many districts uh, right now. What can school leaders start doing now or in the fall that will help them prepare to make that transition again if we need to do so at some point in the 2020-21 school year um, so that we it's a little more seamless than it was this time around? Yeah, well, I mean, in particular with, with online learning, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of different, I guess, stakeholders out there who participate in, um, in online learning and in, in, in developing uh, anything from LMSs to curriculum content. So I think now as you wind down, I'm sure um, a lot of school leaders were just trying to find solutions that work right now. And now that there might be some more time to plan, I think it'll be really important for school leaders to, uh, for lack of a better term, shop around, um, to, to, to look around at, you know, does their state have a program like Alabama, for example, has an Alabama access program or Florida has a Florida virtual program. So are there state supports for online options? Um, if not, um, what are the potential uh, other sources for online options? Are they private vendors? Look in the history of those private vendors to see what their uh, ambitions and motivations are. Look out for bad actors, frankly. So shop around, but also try and 
find what the mission and history of different online learning providers are. Um, determine if you have the capacity to, to create some things in-house. Um, and I say these because, you know, I, I mentioned at the start that flexibility will be really important. So you're probably going to be planning for courses to, that could um, start face-to-face -face and transition online and um, might plan to have courses that are kind of banked to be online only as a contingency plan. So I think it's important to look at the vendors out there to see what um, they're offering, again, what their motivations are, what their history is, um, how that can, um, how that kind of can be incorporated with what your, what your teachers, um, where, where they're at right now. Um, and in some cases, what, what, you know, what the teacher union might be um, uh, amenable to doing and, and to really start having those conversations to do that shopping and to think about, you know, okay, if we do have these face-to-face -face classes and they are forced to go online, who do I turn to, where do I turn, and who can I trust? And I think now that there's some time, um, I think this is the opportunity to really uh, game out those different scenarios in the fall while also, you know, having time to not just find what solutions work right now, but what solutions work uh, well down the road and, and you have more time to vet them and, and think about what's what's best and, and what's most reliable uh, in the future. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. So mm -hmm. this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning. And today our with has been Brian Mann. Thanks for having me.